Today we're gonna take a look at Headshot 2.0, a new version of the extremely popular plugin for character creator from Reillusion. This AI-powered plugin allows you to generate high-quality rigs for the types of faces that you want, whether it be realistic, stylized, or cartoony. So this tool can handle the whole spectrum with an extremely easy and intuitive workflow. If you haven't heard about it yet, the new Headshot plugin 2.0 offers a lot of new and exciting features. Because on the Headshot page, there is a list of all the new functionalities that the team worked on, like a brand new mesh workflow that features highly accurate mesh wrapping and texture baking options. In addition to the ability to turn still photos or static head models into fully rigged 3D faces for voice lip sync, also easy facial expressions and full body animation. If this is not amazing, I don't know what is, because I'm impressed. Like this is mind blowing, it feels like bending the laws of physics. Also, the classic image workflow now supports AI processes. For example, auto mode makes low res virtual heads with additional 3D hair with a one click button, which is great, and the pro mode is designed for high res texture processing. But this is not all, because there is a free bonus. Headshot has a thousand plus morphs included, which are predefined presets that you can experiment with for all facial expressions, from the larger adjustments to the finer details. These morphs are actually super helpful and they are gonna save you a ton of time. Actually, they deserve a standalone video for how much functionality they provide and how comprehensive they are at modeling and reshaping faces using solid sliders. If you are a character creator user, then you already know how this works, but let's take a closer look at the new Headshot 2.0. So to start creating character creators characters, make sure you install the latest version of Headshot from the Real Illusion Hub. Once you get everything set up, you will see that there are two modes, image and mesh. Image mode is an older mode that uses a photo to generate a 360 character similar to the photo. And mesh mode, however, is a new feature with the Headshot 2.0. In mesh mode, there are four model types, which are whole, covered, partial, and full body. Whole will work best on complete and hairless head models, while covered is best suited for models wearing hats or having hair. On the other hand, partial is used for scanned models where part of the head isn't completely covered. And lastly, full body is used as expected for full body models. Now, to import your model to start working with Headshot, you can just drag it and drop it in the viewport. And you can also select your textures in the panel on the left. One thing to be aware of is that your model has to face the camera, so if you're not, make sure that you rotate it accordingly. Now you can click the Start Head Generation button, which in turn will take you through a three simple step process. Align points to facial features, head generation, and mesh refinement. First is align points. On the mesh to head panel, you are gonna mark all your source models with a number of points. To define the location of different facial features, you can choose between 24, 32, or 35 points presets, depending on how detailed you wanna go. Of course, more points means less distortion, more accuracy, and better for preserving the base model. To start adding points, simply click on the source model where you want the model to be added. And you can follow the reference point window on the left and try to add the point as close as possible to the reference. It is also important to note that these points need to be defined in order. Conversely, to delete points, click Ctrl plus left click. The points also can be easily adjusted from the menu on the top, as well as their color, opacity, and size. Another option is to automate the whole process by using a function where the software will automatically estimate the point position for you. You can then go in and refine the position accordingly. That's another great option, but I will only set the minimum to 24 point preset. When a character is more or less realistic, defining the point won't require that much though. However, for more stylized and facial characters where proportions on body parts isn't comparable to the reference model, you're gonna have to mark additional points to define all the features correctly. Either way, once you are satisfied with the positioning of the points, you can jump to the next step by clicking Head Gen AI. Here you can select areas of the head 
or you want to maintain its shape and hide areas that you don't need. Also, when a scan is partial, the AI will try and generate the remaining textures and mesh. On the side, you will see three presets to choose from to hide certain parts of the mesh. As for the final stage, you have mesh refinement, and as the name suggests, in this stage, you will be refining the mesh to resemble a reference mesh as close as possible. To do that, you will have a couple of brushes that you can use to manipulate the geometry. First is Move, which will allow you to modify the surface by selecting vertices. The smooth brush evens out the surface to create a cleaner topology, and the clone brush will also smooth out the shape, but it uses blend weights to conform the mesh to the character creator head shape for the AI generated mesh shape. Lastly is the project brush, and this one just tries to project the surface vertices to the character creator head mesh. On a side note, Manipulating vertices especially should be done while the project to original mesh feature is enabled to get the best result and vertices placement. Once everything is done, you can now click on the attach body button at the bottom and the generate character model window will pop up. This will allow you to choose from a list of different body type presets. You can also choose different texture presets to choose how much the original texture you wish to preserve and how much needs to be generated which gives you a lot of control. Additionally, you will have different baking options. For diffuse, you can bake from the source mesh or from the high poly mesh, and you can project from an image, or you can pick textureless, but you can still apply diffuse later. For the normal, you have two options, source mesh or external high poly mesh. Furthermore, you can set the text resolution for the baked maps from the drop down menu at the bottom. Now you can hit generate to generate your face along with the original mesh. From there you can do more refinement. For example, you can use the headshot morphs which allows you to manipulate and modify your face mesh using simple controls like the ones you see in video games. You can also find the headshot morph 1000 pack which is shared for free with headshot 2.0. So using the headshot morphs, you can manipulate every visual aspect of the face mesh using only sliders which is amazing. Things like eye colors, skin tones, and even down to the different wrinkles of the face which you have multiple here, and you can manipulate them from the wrinkles tab. That's not all, because you can now export your model to iClone to further edit and take advantage of all the powerful animation tools and features it offers such as Face Puppet, Automatic Lip Sync, as well as Facial Motion Capture, just to name a few. So, if you guys found this interesting and you want to take your animation game to the next level, then I recommend you take a look at Headshot, and you will find the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also check some of our previous videos, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.